Hi, and welcome to the Golf Channel Academy, and I'm Rick Smith. I'm at the beautiful Treetops Resort in Gaylord, Michigan. I've been part of this resort for over 15 years. We have over four and a half golf courses, and I'll tell you, the landscape and the beauty is, is here. And I've been around the world, and I'll tell you, every time I come back here, I, I just love being here. And I, I look forward to having you come in here whenever you have a chance. It's in the Midwest and northern Michigan, and the beauty is great. The architecture here and the golf holes are tremendous. And you can get lost out here with your golf clubs, and uh, you won't want to go home. But in the meantime, I've had a chance to teach a lot of people here at Treetops. And this is the original golf academy that I founded 15 years ago. And what I have found with people is that when people come up to practice, and when I see people practice generally, they're always hitting golf balls. They're hitting ball after ball after ball. And, and usually when they're practicing, they don't really have good things to work on. Maybe they're looking for that secret, and they don't find that secret. And a lot of the secrets that you're going to find when you practice is how you practice when you're not hitting golf balls. You can actually do things like body motion drills. You can do exercises that really relate to core fundamentals in your golf swing and do arm swing exercises. You can do things without clubs. And in fact, if you try to do things more like three or four times a week, 15 minutes a day, that's all I ask you to do. You don't have to do as much as you think because in golf, we do want to do things the right way. And I know a lot of you don't have time to practice. You've got other things in your life and yet you want to play pretty good golf. And I think this is going to be an important show for you to pay attention to and try to pay attention to some of these exercises and drills that will help you to become a better player. What you obviously see behind me is a mirror. This is one of our teaching mirrors here at Treetops. And what I do, we try to get people, we'll watch them hit golf balls, we're going to do some video, and then we get them up here without their clubs. Sometimes we'll have them bring a club, but we're not going to have them hit a ball for at least 20 to 30 minutes. We're going to have them go through some exercises that really help them to see themselves because you know remember as kids you can always mimic and visualize things very well and for some reason as we grow older why should we really stop learning that way we grow older we got to read things we have to understand every word that comes out of everybody's mouth and we don't we don't understand what's coming out of their mouth we get confused we get frustrated it's better for you to see yourself in motion when you're doing exercises the first drill I'm gonna do is the body motion drill and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it from a couple different angles but the first one is you know we see people come to our schools and they're set up to the golf ball knees like this straight spine and they wonder why they're hitting golf balls that aren't really solid and they wonder why they're losing power we see people bend over like this we see people that look straight on and all of a sudden we see them leaning to the left with their spine forward we see them sitting back this way sitting back on their heels and they wonder why they're hitting the golf ball poorly. We see people that are setting up like this. Well, one of the things I want to show you in terms of mirror work is this. From a back angle, we're going to start at a tension, feet a little wider than the shoulders. We're going to bend at the hip joints and you can see that the spine now really is lowered down into a position that now allows my shoulders to turn back and to turn through on that proper angle. Sometimes I take a piece of tape, and I take a piece of tape in this case, and I'll put it on an angle that represents my spine. And what I'm going to do from this exercise is from setup, I'm going to go ahead and get into this bend at the hips, and I'm going to put the club up in front of my chest, and when I turn back, I'm going to turn back and watch when I turn through. I turn through and I feel like my whole body is released, my right shoulder is worked lower through the hitting area, and you can see that my right knee is touching my left, shoelaces of my right foot are going down the middle of the fairway. Notice my eyes and head are going down the middle of the fairway. We see so many of you do this. You turn back, you're finishing up here. We see people go this way, and they're, they're back like this. We see people back on the right foot. We wonder, hey, wait a minute, I can do this at home. If I make a good turn away, I'm going to go forward. The same thing goes in reverse. If I were to take this again, and you can see that that's my spine angle in my address position. In fact, I'll turn it because obviously that's going to be the best way to do this. I'm going to go ahead and get into this position. I'm putting the piece of tape up here. And if you take a look at from this angle here, back angle is bent. And now I'm going to work on my turn back. And you can see that my turn is going through the tape. We don't see this. We don't see this. You can also see this. Take a look at my right knee. 
see how stable it stays as I make my turn back. Notice that my chest is facing the mirror. That's an important position to be in. Now when I come back, I'm going to come back to you with more drills. I'm going to take this drill a step further from some other angles and then I'm going to bring in one of my teachers here at Treetops and we're going to be talking to you about more things that you can do and things that will really help you the most in your golf game. Do you ever practice without hitting balls, like in the mirror or stand in your hotel room or anything? Oh, sure. I stay in the room and I feel like I just have my putter and I practice my stroke or sometimes my backswing, especially my left, making my backswing. Kind of simple. You know, it's tough making changes. In fact, changes feel, even a minor grip change, feels so major that you don't let it happen. And worst of all, when you get out on the practice tee and you're trying to make a change and all of a sudden you hit a bad shot, you don't give it the time of day. You won't give it a chance. You go back to what you feel is comfortable, which isn't always right. I think it's very important to practice with mirror work to where you start to get more comfortable in that change and you can see it for yourself and then actually take some time and think about it. Some of the best players in the world actually take a few minutes out of the day and visualize what they're going to be changing. And they actually sit down and they get more comfortable with themselves. A lot of us are very uncomfortable in change and it's normal to be that way. Give it some time though. And again, mirror work can be a very positive element as well as thinking positively about what you want to do instead of hitting a bad shot and automatically just discarding it. That's not how you make things work. Give yourself a chance. Visualize better. Think clear. Use the mirrors. It's going to help you a lot. I've said it many times before, the minute that we hit a golf shot and we hit it offline or we top it or we sky it or we hook it, we start to try to create compensations that make up for what we feel we need to do. In other words, we think that just common sense takes over. If, for example, if I'm topping the ball, I think I need to scoop and get the ball up in the air. If all of a sudden I start slicing the golf ball, I think I need to turn my shoulders over to the left to fix it, which is wrong. If I'm hooking the golf ball, I start closing my shoulders up to the right. And if it doesn't work in the setup, it start, we start to do things during the swing. So here I am, back at the mirror, and I've put another piece of tape up on the mirror that represents my center and a tilted center back. Now you can see I want my hips to turn a little left this way, which brings my spine back. I see so many people set up to the golf ball the wrong way. The right hip is very high in the address. Their shoulders, it almost looks like they're in front of their golf ball before they even get ready to hit it, and they wonder why they can't make a good turn. And when they make a turn, they have make such a weak turn. They're very tilted here, and from here, they're either going to go way out in front or they're going to rock back to try to get the ball up in the air. You look at the best players in the world, and they look this way. Their hips, just a hair to the left, spine back, and this is again the exercise. And the exercise looks this way. Holding the knees stable, left heel to the ground, knee stable, the trunk is turning back. Now, the trunk is turned back. Now, if you take a look at this position here, I feel coiled. I feel like I can almost tap my left foot lightly and still hold my upper body turn. If you look back this way, obviously you can see that my buttons on my shirt are facing more away from the target and you can also see that I haven't pulled away. You haven't seen this pull away this way, you haven't seen me go down. Now back to this angle. I think it's important. I take a golf ball because a lot of people work on turn and when they work on turn they start twisting like a top and they wonder why their arms are wrapping around their body. Well that's overdone and what I do, I'm going to take this ball and I'm going to put it in my right hand and I'm going to do a little drill where I introduce the arms to the body which is a very important blend that you have to have. I'm also going to take, you can see from face on, I'm going to take my left hand and put it up on my right shoulder. Now take a look at this golf ball in my right arm and right hand. My right arm is soft, it's hanging down from my shoulders and when I go back I want the right arm and the trunk to work together and as I do that you can see the ball is still on top you can see that I'm not fanning the golf ball off to the side, nor am I hooding it back down to the ground. It starts on top, it stays on top here, 
and when I go to the top of the swing, notice how the right arm and the chest turn together, and now you see that right arm in straight on. It almost looks like an L position of the right arm. Notice also that I feel coiled. From this back angle, my arms feel up in the air. My right arm is folded, but it's up. I don't want this by itself. I don't want this because you can see I'm turning like a top and the arm's way behind me. If I were to throw this ball down to the ball, the imaginary ball that's on the ground, good luck. I may hit my right foot. I may hit, throw it in the trees. I want to get my right arm in a position that allows my trunk to turn and still get the right arm to where I know when I move back through the left side, I can go ahead and bring her right back down to the golf ball. That's that up and down motion. You've heard people saying, I got to get it in the slot. Well, that is the slot. The right arm's moving back down to the ball with good body motion forward. Now also, from face on, take a look at this. You can do mirror work where you feel like that left shoulder's behind the tape. Where it started, it really started right through the center of my head and went right down through the center of my body. And you look at the best players in the world and you see the extension and you see that left shoulder getting behind the tape. Now on the downswing, we don't want to just spin out and stay back here, nor do we want to move way in front. We want to have a blend of the turn to the left, and if you take a look in the mirror, you can see that my weight is turning to the left, and look at impact right here. Pushing off the right, turning into the left, and a great exercise. Do it again, you can do it with a ball. Take a look at the right arm and the chest back and through. Simulate this back and through several times. You don't want to go this way. We see a ton of this at our schools. People scooping, not moving the body correctly, getting very loose, right arm never extending through. You see this with the best. You see this and you see him go through. Right arm gets extended. You can see the finish. And in fact, I'm even going to start with my feet together, turning back, I'm going to step through and then go right out of the screen. And that's what I want to feel. I want to feel like I can turn back, step, 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 and go. Those are the exercises that you can do in front of the mirror. Just relating to body motion, you can use that piece of tape and put it on your spine angle from back or from face on. And then you can do the drill with the ball in your hand because I think it's important to get a feel for what your arm should do with your body because it's the blend that makes great players the great players. It's the blend that's consistent from day to day. That's good work for you. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about some other drills and we're going to get you hitting the golf ball better without all these thoughts. During the show, we've been talking about body motion, and it's very important to put the proper swing shape in with your body motion to make it work. And to really help explain it, I have Brett LeBrock, who's my head instructor at Treetops, and we have a good drill for you, and we haven't hit a shot yet, but Brett, let's talk about this little simple drill as it relates to the swing shape and also the body motion. Sure, yeah, this is a great drill that you can take home and practice at home in the backyard and set up a good workstation without a club. So what we do here is put two clubs off our balls of our feet or our little toes and this is pretty much to represent where our arms are going to be working in the golf swing. From front on we've got a broken shaft here or a shaft rod and it's pretty much opposite my sternum because this is going to be our checkpoint for our, for our body motion. What we do here is assuming we've got a good posture here we go little hand first and little hand will be our left hand, big hand will be our right. And what you'll see is both hands are pointed straight out because my right hand is the club face here so we're mirroring the club face. As we go back Here's what we need to do, take both hands back together, little hand, big hand turn back together with a stable lower body until the right arm pretty much matches the shaft on the ground from down the line here. What we see at our schools a lot is our chest gets left behind and our arms start the takeaway and that's not the right sequencing of body motion and arm swing shape. So what we really need to feel is both little hand and big hand go back together. How much? Well just until we match the shaft up. This would be too far out and obviously this would be too far around. Now once we go from here, here's the next step. As I call to the top, my little hand has to keep following my big hand. So from down the line, my, my little hand keeps turning. 